Hi there. Here are anatomy multiple choice questions on the head and neck. Question 1. The facial artery crosses the mandible at the anterior border of the A. The platysma muscle B. Masseta muscle C. Basneta muscle D. Protid gland and E. Submandibular gland so at which anterior border does the facial nerve cause the mandible so among these uh, structures which are here at which anterior border does the facial artery cause the mandible so the correct answer here is b the facial artery Causes the mandible at the anterior border of the masseta muscle. So, this is the masseta muscle here, and that is the facial artery. So, it is crossing the mandible here at the anterior border of the masseta muscle. So, this is the anterior border, that is the posterior border of the masseta muscle. So, our facial artery is crossing the mandible mandible is that bone which is there so it is crossing the mandible at the anterior border of the masseta muscle the correct answer is b question two the peripheral nervous system consists of a 20 pairs of spinal nerves b 31 pairs of spinal nerves c 25 pairs of spinal nerves D, 33 pairs of spinal nerves, and E, 34 pairs of spinal nerves. So the correct answer here for question 2 is B. Peripheral nervous system consists of 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So we have the spinal cord, then we have spinal nerves. So we are going to have 31 pairs this side, and 31, uh, 31 nerves, neurons this side, and 31 neurons this side making up a pair of the, uh, 31. Okay, so the correct answer is B for question two. Question three, which of the following statement is false about vertebrae venous plexus? A, communicate with the bacilla and occipital sinuses. B, have a competent valves or a valveless C tumor cells or pus may reach the brain through these veins and D these this is not a route for thrombus or tumor cells from pelvic organs to the brain E the internal and external venous plexus drain into the the regional segmental veins so which one is false among these statements here? So the one which is false is D. This is not a route for rhombus or tumor cells from pelvic organs to the brain. So a rhombus in these plexus, so the vertebrae, the vertebrae venous plexus are these plexus there. So those are the vertebrae venous plexus. So this, this plexus, if it's rhombus, develops it can travel through the blood vessels and reach and cause a stroke or if it is a tumor cell then it can cause a tumor which can result in a in stroke okay so this statement is false because uh, because a thrombus or tumor cells can travel through via these uh, vessels reach and they can reach their brain and also they can cause stroke or and other complications so that's why this d is false this is not so it is a root as well so the answer here is d so the internal and external venous plexus drain into the regional segmental veins which is very correct uh, the vertebral venous plexus communicate with the basilar and occipital sinuses yes they do communicate okay 
So let's go to question four. Question four. Regarding the scalp, the following are true except A. Both the occipital and frontalis bellies have no bone attachment. B. Communicates with intracranial venous sinuses through a measly veins linking to the loose alveolar tissue. C. Infection in the sub in the subaproneurotic space can enter the eyelids and root of the nose. D. The posterior half of the scalp derives its sensory supply from the cervical plexus. And E. During birth, symphalohematomas develop under the pericranium. Okay, so, so regarding the scalp, the following are true except. Okay, so the first statement here is A. Both the occipital frontalis bellies have no bone attachment. So when you look at the occipital frontalis uh, muscle, which is this muscle here, when you look at it, it has the front, frontal uh, belly and then an occipital belly. So the occipital belly is attached to what we call the nuchal superior, the superior nuchal line which is on the bone of the occipital so it has uh, a bone attachment on the occipital bone but anteriorly it has no bone attachment it attaches on the root of the nose there and also the skin and the uh, muscle of the eyelid okay so that's why we are saying a is not true because the occipital belly has bone attachment okay so the occipital belly has bone attachment so this one is saying the occipital and frontalis bellies have no bone attachment meaning this statement is false okay so all are true so let's look at it during birth symphalohematomas develop under the pericranium this is very true during having when you're having difficulties in giving birth, the this kind of hematoma can develop where blood accumulates in the pericranium, which is the layer of the scalp. Okay. And then the posterior half of the scalp derives its sensory supply from the cervical plexus. That is very true. The posterior half, those four nerves derive their their uh, sensory supply from the cervical plexus okay then from there infection in the sub sub aponeurotic space can enter the iris and root of the nose yes this is very true because the frontalis the occipital frontalis bellies the frontal belly has no bone attachment therefore we can have uh we can have uh, infection Flowing blood can flow if uh, at all you have an injury. Blood can flow from this side and accumulate in the eyes, causing what we call black eye. Okay, black eye where we have swollen eyelids which appear to be dark because of accumulation of blood. So, if that blood or that there is an uh, uh, infection, that infection can be can affect the nose and the eyelids. So that's why that statement is true. So the first statement here is A. Okay, so let's move on to question five. So the pulsations just above the zygomatic arch and in front of the ear are due to A, facial nerve, B, superficial temporal artery, C, lingual artery, D, internal carotid artery, and E, facial artery. So the pulsations are due to the superficial temporal artery. So this in green here is the superficial temporal artery, which is the branch of the external carotid artery together with the maxillary artery. Okay. So the pulsation which are felt here in the temporal fossa are of, as a result of the superficial temporal artery. So the correct answer is B. Question six. The platysma 
is innervated by the a mandibular nerve b maxillary nerve c accessory nerve d hypoglossal nerve e cervical branch of the facial nerve the correct answer is e cervical branch of the facial nerve innervates the platysma okay so the platysma is this muscle here which attaches on the chin there okay on the mandible and some of the muscles attaches on the muscles of the lips okay and then this side it attaches on the clavicle it attaches on the clavicle so it originates on the clavicle and inserts on the mandible there so this muscle paired muscle is what we call the platysma so innervation this is the facial nerve we ha it has five branches it has the temporal branch it has the zygomatic branch which is this branch here then it has the buccal branch it has the marginal branch which is this one here and it also has this branch which is called the cervical branch so that cervical branch is going to innervate this muscle here the platysma muscle which depresses uh, the chin okay so the correct answer here is e platysma muscle is innervated by the cervical branch of the facial nerve question seven the internal carotid artery pieces the dura mater immediately media to a foramen ovary b foramen lucism lucidum c anterior cricoid clauses d anterior condyla foramen and e a sphenoid spine so the correct answer here is the anterior cl clinoid process of the sphenoid bone okay so when you look at the the sphenoid so this is the sphenoid and its features so we have this anterior clinoid process and here we have the carotid groove so the carot internal carotid artery is going to pass here just anterior to to the anterior cl clinoid process it is going to piece the dura mater the dura mater there so the correct answer here is c anterior to the anterior to the anterior clinoid process question eight the layer of the scalp which allows movement to take place is the a skin b connective tissue c aponeurosis d loose areolar tissue e pericranium so the layer which allows movement is d the loose areolar tissue okay so this one allows movement the skin connective tissue and the aponeurosis are attached together so this connective tissue connects the skin with the aponeurosis so they are as a single layer so they move they can move on the loose areolar tissue okay that's why an injury okay can uh, blood can accumulate on top of the areolar tissue and can flow go into the iris and in the root of the of the nose and cause what we call the black eye okay so question nine so question eight the correct answer is d question nine which is the true statement about the internal carotid artery which is the true statement about the internal carotid artery a one of its branches is the superior thyroid artery b it is given off from the common carotid artery at the level of the upper border of the body of the hyoid bone c it it's only its only branch in the neck is the thyro thyroidia ima artery and d it is surrounded by a sympathetic plexus from the superior cervical ganglion so the correct answer here is d the internal carotid artery is surrounded 
by a sympathetic plexus from the superior cervical ganglion. So when you look at this diagram here, this is the sympathetic uh, cervical ganglion. You have the upper ganglion, the superior ganglion, you have the middle, and you have the lower cervical ganglion. So these four uh, cervical nerves are going to form what we call the superior ganglion, which will, are going to give rise to nerves which are going to form plexus on the internal carotid artery there that is the internal carotid artery we can see the plexus of the superior uh superior cervical ganglion there so the correct answer is d okay so why are a b and c not correct so a one of its branches is the superior thyroid artery so the superior thyroid artery comes from uh, the external it is the first branch of the external carotid artery then when you look at uh, b it is given off from the common carotid artery at the level of the upper border of the body of the hyoid bone this is very long because uh the branch the branches of the common carotid artery it is at the level of c4 that's where the common carotid artery branches into internal and external okay c it only branch in the neck is the thyroid so the internal carotid artery does not give any branch into the neck okay this branch is comes from the common carotid artery just at the junction of the uh the carotid artery, common carotid artery and the subclavian and the symphalic artery there that's where that this thyro thyroid ima artery comes from okay so the correct answer for this question is d question 10 regarding the meninges of the brain find the true statement a the space between the dura mater and the skull is occupied by the veins b the pia mater bridges the gap between gyli and c the arachnoid glomeration project in the inferior sagittal sinus d the subdura space is occupied by the cerebrospinal fluid and e the arteries are seen in the subarachnoid space so the correct answer here is e arteries are seen in the subarachnoid space that is the correct answer e so thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to like subscribe for more uh, multiple choice question videos and leave your comment please concerning this video what you think about this video what you really want to see in the next video you can share it in the comment section thank you so much